In today's video, I'm going to be doing a breakdown of the most recent music video I shot and directed for Deeps' new single called Bruised. Literally come out last week, I've had quite a few messages asking for a little breakdown of the video and I thought it, was, it is a really cool video to, to kind of break down because there's loads of like hidden things in it and there's a whole story behind the shooting and like what happened and I feel like it's quite a unique shoot com compared to the other shoots I've done and it's just a really exciting video and something that I'm extremely proud of and would just like to, to talk through it. So very early on in the pre-production it was very clear that our inspiration was going to be drawn a lot from Matt Reeves's The Batman. That whole colour grading green, orange, red kind of feel, that, that almost like cracked edges, blurred edges, was something that we were really inspired about and what how we wanted the video to look. And we ended up going for a location scout a couple of weeks before uh, we started shooting. We picked out some key areas that we thought certain scenes could go at. With those pictures that we took from that night, I created a, what I like to call a reference video, where I just kind of put mood board images and location images all into this one video with the song playing in the background so we can kind of reference where everything's going to go in the video. I, I think this, this is really important to my process and almost like a kind of, I don't know if many other people do it, but it's quite crucial for me, is it just kind of lays out the groundwork for everyone else so everyone can see like kind of your vision of like where everything should go in relation to the song. It just kind of like negates anything like, oh, I thought that was going to go there or I thought that was going to go there. So it's like super black and white, exactly what you want to do. What How this reference video kind of plays out is exactly how the video plays out and I think that's this is like a real key element of building such a, a tight-knit narrative this is so crucial for that and every location that we did see on the location scout we used in the music video we kind of like acted out what certain scenes were going to look like we learned a lot from it and I think that's what's so important about location scouts is that you can get a real feel of like how the location is actually going to look so in terms of shooting schedule and shot list as so I do an A to B of like what the the story is actually going to be about so when we actually send it to people people have a, have a really good idea of like what the video is about we did do a shooting schedule to like kind of say what order we were going to shoot everything in in this one, which isn't always the case, we did shoot in chronological order for the most part until we got to the end. Because we were shooting in Brighton and it was like 2am when we were out shooting, I broke up the shooting into two days. So we had one out in Brighton and then we had one at the apartment uh, with the car in Southampton. I think we, we definitely needed two days. I think we shot this in April this year. Uh, and the clocks had just moved, so it wasn't getting dark until like 9 o'clock at night, so we weren't shooting until like 9 onwards, which was getting into late territory, but it was the only way we could do it, especially if we wanted this whole like dark theme. So that that was pretty much most of it pre-production as, as a rough kind of guideline of what we did with the location scout, the reference video, and the mood board. It, it's kind of like essential to, to any sort of production anywhere, especially like at this level, you don't need to go too crazy, but as long as the people involved in involved in the production know what's going on that that's the most important thing and you know the shots you're going to get but anyway let's let's jump into the video and i will talk through um certain moments that happened and kind of like any stories behind it straight off the bat with this you see the title and you see a lovely skyline of london uh this isn't actually our footage this is stock footage that i did color grade to kind of blend in with the rest of the video i think it was 4k so it was it was good enough to, to do the same colour scheme as, as the rest of the video. In the original draft we had, it did go straight into the song, but I, I felt like it needed a builder and a title page, and you couldn't really do the title page on like the first scene, like here. We opted to have this this kind of like drone shot to set the scene of like where they are. They're in a built up area there. It's not like they're in the countryside or anything. They're in a city. Um, and I really wanted to like get that across. And I added these sound effects in afterwards as well. And I actually really loved the transition that we did with kind of like the sirens. And we, it's just a motorboat that kind of like drives past. And it goes into the song. And I think it just goes really nicely with it. But with this starting apartment scene, we actually added this in halfway through production. So the start of the video is initially just going to go straight into a chase scene. And as we were kind of shooting it and... In Brighton, we were kind of like, there needs to be a moment where it establishes, because we knew the ending was going to end in their apartment. We needed something that established the apartment right at the start. So we opted to have this as the start with her leaving and he kind of sees, because then we originally, we already know that they know each other. Our issue was that they were going to go straight into the chase scene and you, the audience wouldn't know that they already know each other. So I think this bit was crucial. It's almost like the, the twist at the end was that these guys already know each other. They're somewhat living together. Um, and kind of like a subjective 
perspective on it. So a little fun fact about this uh, restaurant scene. So when we actually got there, we got there at like quarter to 10 at night and they were just about to shut. We looked on Google. It said that they were open till 10 and we got there and set up the camera ready to go. Emmy was about to walk in. They turned off all the lights that like they're about to close, which isn't the best start to a shoot of a music video. Uh, so we were like, what are we gonna do? Uh, Ethan amazingly went into to the restaurant and just said, hi, we're filming this little thing outside. Could you just literally turn your lights on for like five minutes? And uh, they were amazing. They didn't really ask many questions. They just turned it back on. And a really cool detail about this that it just fell into place is the, it actually says closed on the door. And that's not planned. That it makes it look even more suspicious that she's going into a closed restaurant, like why she's going in there. Um, and you can't really even really tell it's a restaurant like that. It's such a cool looking spot. And it's one of the first spots we, we spotted. <laughs> How many times I want to say spot? Um, on the location scout. And this is actually the one shot that when people watch this video, they're like, oh, I really love that shot. That, that shot looks awesome. And it does. It, it does look really great. And it's a great start to the uh, almost the, the setting in Brighton. So after this bit, it was going to go straight into a chase scene. But because this part of the, the music video where, where she's picking up the package behind this car park lot, it, there wasn't enough room to like let this blossom. We had to just cut it out because it just, it, it just didn't fit in the video and I couldn't imagine it being in the video now, but it was such a strong part of the concept at the start. But when we, when we were editing it, because we shot all the chase scenes actually on the day, but when we went into editing, it didn't, just didn't fit into the video. So we just cut it out. So this was meant to be really bright, like really bright. I was going to play with the shadows on the wall. There were just two big floodlights above the door and they just wouldn't come on for the light. Like they just absolutely would not come on. So luckily we had, which we brought like some tube lighting anyway, just to light certain scenes. And so we brought these, these three light tubes and we just put them on the window sills. You can't really tell. I mean, like it's not the best lighting, but you can kind of see them up there and in, in on the on the windowsill. So there's two up there and then there's literally one down by their right that kind of lights up that back wall. So there's some separation between them and the wall instead of it being pitch black. But that whole corner is completely pitch black, like no light whatsoever. So that is all us adding it in, which added a bit more stress to the day than we needed, but we made it work in the end. And I think that's all part of the music video. Like we, we would never have, you can't plan that happening. It's that's just part and parcel of making videos is stuff like this happen. You've got to think on your feet. I love that shot as well. Like that's that, that really does scream like Batman kind of vibes to me. I just love how that, that looks. I mean, I remember when we did it, we were like, yeah, yeah, this, this is really, really cool. So again, after this bit, that was when another chase scene was going to go in there. We did film some chase scene clips for this bit, but because we wanted this fight scene after this to, to blossom and have a build up to it. It just didn't make any sense. There was just too much to cram in. And something we really played with in the editing order is when to have Callum's eyes, so the, the lead thug, thug's eyes come up on screen and his footstep over. We will see to us, when we originally did it, we're like, oh, we know Callum's got van, so we know it's Callum, but that's such a silly thing to say because the audience aren't gonna know he had vans on. So I think it was really important to have Callum's eyes come up first and then someone stepping over the puddle to kind of insinuate that that's Callum running away and Deeps isn't that far away. Hence why this following clip kind of like slows everything down. He kind of walks into frame and then he looks like puzzled about like what he's just seen. And then that's when we have Deeps coming down the alleyway. And I think it was really important for us not to have Deeps lit up so we wanted him to come into the light so it was still very dark but deep to come into the light so you can't see the thug the thugs in the background and then as deep gets closer you can kind of see these black figures come out from the background and then literally as before the beat drops he looks up and then the beat drops and then he starts the fighting this is probably my favorite part of the music video because we spoke a lot about how to do this fight scene what's the best way to do it and I kind of like had this really strong image in my head right from the start when we started planning the video of this kind of like speed ramped punching. So the audio can kind of go with it. And I think it come out so well. So I shot this whole thing in 60 frames a second, got so much footage just to make sure we got it. And I just got 
Butch, who is thug number two, to stand in front of the camera and just punch. And I was just going with it with the camera. So I was literally stood there with him. Every time he punched, I was just kind of moving with him. I think it came out really nicely. I love, I love how it plays out. Um, I think you really feel it. And then obviously Deeps gradually gets more blood on him as he gets beaten up more. I think we got the lighting on this bit really, really spot on as well because we didn't want to over light it where like um, you could see everything was going on. We still wanted to leave like a little bit of mystery in it. And I think we got the level spot on on this. Um, and bear in mind, this was like two o'clock in the morning as well. All freezing. It was like the coldest day in April ever. It was like, honestly, it was like December. It was so cold. Everyone was freezing. So shout out to the team for persevering on the on the night of shooting but yeah this was like one of the last things we shot in brighton it was very 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 late i mean i could say it's early morning at this point i love it when it goes black because it almost like signifies that that's the first part of the, the video and it's like the second part to come because they are quite different they're like two very different parts of the video and i think this like black screen just like signifies oh another bit's about to start this part was the last thing we shot on the first day of shooting in Brighton and we did it many, many times um, because we wanted to get this bit like really respawned because this was like the only point, the only singing point in the video um, and we wanted this bit to like bring the energy because the song like completely switches up and Deeps absolutely crushed it like smashing into the wall at least like 10 times on each wall and it transitions really nicely because they're three separate shots. His shoulder must have absolutely kill like credit to Deeds for doing this because uh, yeah he was launching himself into the walls over and over and over and over again but he's so good this bit so fun fact about th those two shots there they're actually two completely different locations so this first bit where he walks out into the, the alleyway onto the road uh, this bits in Brighton and then we matched up the clip uh, from when we had the car in Southampton with this one here you can kind of see the, the change of background but you would never know it. We've done we've done a very good job to of switching the locations up, but they are two separate locations. And then this car rig shot again, one of my favourite. Everyone kind of points this one out when they watch the video. Had to have a little snippet of the car rig, and now you know everyone knows that I love a bit of car rig. Uh, I love how it's just like such a small fraction of the video that it just like pops so much. And again, we just um, we just drove around a couple of times and had deep say the sing the verse um, and kind of waited for the perfect moment where a street light goes over deeps and he does it spot on. He looks up when he says the says the line about street lights, he looks up at the most perfect moment and it just looks really, really cool. And then the transition to inside the car, I'm literally sat on the, the front passenger seat, like shaking as the car's moving, trying to get a shot of deeps. Um, and I'm really happy how this bit's come out. And I suppose with like narrative, videos in general um it's really important to have little snippets to follow on the story and i think this shot of the wheel and the car just like stopping reinforces the fact that deeps is getting out and we're leaving the, the situation of the car and, I, and just bring it back to this this start bit sorry when the car appears like we needed to make it obvious that a car was coming to pick deeps up we didn't want him to stand on the side of the road like oh hi pick me up it's almost like being subjective about oh is it a taxi is he just like hijacked he just jumped in the back of the car like all that is kind of leaving it up to your own mind as you're watching. So this elevator scene, love it again. I know I'm saying that about every scene, but it's, it's just the case. So how we lit this one, we had two tube lighting literally on the left and left and right of the elevator, just pointing straight up and it makes deeps glow so well. It makes the elevators are really cool for color grading anyway. So this part of the video was actually speed ramping. So on every beat, so on every beat of the song, I created like a little gradient of speed just by like 25% just to kind of give it that like jolt effect. So it kind of goes with the music. And again, wasn't planned in the original concept, but when we were editing, like this bit just needed a little extra and this is what we came out with. And then those little flashes in, again, weren't originally planned, but go with the, go with the song so well. And I, I remember, when we shot it, I literally, in the elevator, I was just like, let's just get some low shot stuff just in case we need it because th this could look somewhat cool in the elevator. You could use it as social content or whatever and end up making the cut because um, we needed something on those two beats and the low shot stuff looked really cool and it kind of looked like it was hallucinating. So on this next bit of the transition, we really didn't want to just do a hard cut between the elevator and Deeps going back into the apartment. So it was actually Deeps' idea to do this transition where he just walked straight into the camera. 
and then exits through into the apartment he was at at the start. Now, I wanted to make it obvious about where he was, and I think what a really key way of doing that is with colour. So I made sure that this, this scene in particular, that we had that blue light because it's the same as what we had at the start of the video with the blue light when he's when you first see Deep sat in, in his apartment with Emmy. So I think it's really important to, to have that similarity and make sure people know, oh, okay, like I recognize that lighting. Where is he? And hopefully people put two and two together. A fun fact about this bit is that that's Emmy's real tattoo. So we base the symbol off the mysterious symbol that we use throughout the video that's on the, on the piece of paper is actually Emmy's tattoo. So we were gonna fake it, we were gonna like draw it on or we were gonna add like a tattoo sticker. But Emmy has so many cool tattoos on her hand that we were just like, why don't we just use one of them? And this one in particular stuck out to us. So this is the one we went with. So on that bit there we, where Deeps pulls his hand away, like I think a really cool way to add some impact on it is with a speed ramp. So I, I wanted more like force in it. So I just made the bit where the contact on her wrist and pulling away. I just upped it by like 25% in speed and it kind of just adds a bit more of an impact to it. So I think as a whole, from pre-production and what we planned, it was pretty much 90% the same. Let's like say the only stuff that we cut out were the running scenes. But I thoroughly enjoyed making this video. I was, I was probably at my maximum. There was so much to think about. There was so much to shoot. Obviously it was late anyway. We were shooting until like two o'clock in the morning. The most ambitious thing I've ever made, but I'm so glad it's come off and I've had loads of lovely comments about it. Yeah, so it's a nice feeling sat here now knowing it's out when we when it was all finalized done in April. So we've been uh, we've been sitting on it for a little while. But that is that's pretty much everything I wanted to run through. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do some more of these like walkthrough, breakdown, watch along, because I thoroughly enjoyed doing this one today and hopefully you've learned a little bit more about the project and why we made some decisions and kind of the whole process of making a video like this. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I hope you're all good and I will see you soon.